It's adding a new old computer to my collection time again. It was one of my goals of this year to add into my collection. Actually in a video from a couple months back I mentioned it. Take a look. Always fun to see some Cocos. Maybe a good call for 2023 to try to add one of those to my collection. So I think now it's quite clear what computer I will be adding to my collection, aside from the fact that it's mentioned in the video title. The seller I got this from packaged the computer really well, with a piece of cardboard protecting the keyboard. It came with a whole bunch of cables. And this little booklet in Dutch. Very nice small form factor computer. Of course I have to give the keyboard a quick try. I was surprised by how light this computer is. I think it weighs only about a kilo, unlike those bow anchors of IBM PC compatibles. It's nearly looking perfect, aside from these scuffs on the back. I think someone tangled some of the cables it came with around the computer while it was in storage or up against the wall. So let's do a quick test. I got out this Philips television which has some interesting things it can do. Things I hope to show in a future video. So I started tuning the television into the right frequency for the computer and after a couple seconds of twisting I found the right picture, which looked better than I expected. Let's type a bunch of gibberish and of course the mandatory printing basic program. So let's take a closer look at the computer. I really enjoy the badge in the middle. Looking on the side we find the cartridge port. I will have to see if I can source some of the cartridges. On the back things are simple, the RF out, channel switch, cassette port, serial I.O., right and left joysticks, which are interestingly referred to in the Dutch manual as magic wands, and the power button. Oh yeah, and here's a reset button. Interesting switches they used. This is the version that has the melted keys instead of the full size keys. The keyboard is not bad to type on. Let's take a quick look at some of its history and roll in the television and VCR on a trolley. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. This year, I needed to give a real family pleaser. Honey, please help me with this budget. How about a new game, Dad? Please. And I found it. Radio Shack's Color Computer 2. On sale for just $99.95. It entertains, educates, manages. It's expandable and affordable. Now that really pleases me. The Color Computer 2. Sale price for Christmas. Only at Radio Shack. Very nice Christmassy commercial that goes well with this Coco in summer. Good. The computer was of course sold and developed by Radio Shack. Released in 1983. Sold for around $159, equivalent to $470 in 2022. It runs on a 6809E Motorola CPU, which could also be found in, for instance, the SuperPad and the Factrex. It offered a bunch of improvements over the 6502 from MOS, like improved interrupts. Graphics are produced by an MC6847, which could be found in a lot of arcade cabinets too. Mine still has the warranty sticker on it, so for now it is going to stay closed. Although this is what the motherboard looks like. Very clean design. And what is great? No Rifa caps. Now, let's see if we can load some software. I don't own any cassettes for it, but hope to find them soon. I got out my Radio Shack cassette player that I got for free with my Tandy TRS-80 Model 100. Just to be sure, I gave it a quick test with some music. What I want to try first is this cassette adapter, a homebrew version I found at my local thrift store. The technology behind it is very straightforward, as you can see with the clear case. So I put it in the tape deck and played this file from the Color Computer Archive. An awesome site. I'm working on my own retro software archives at this moment, that I hope will be as nice to use as this site. So at first I tried loading it with the cassette adapter. Dragon Pepper did not work, although I was not really sure if it was a Coco 1 or 2 compatible game. F error did not load, giving an FM error, as did F able. Galactic did load, but gave an IO error. I might have used the wrong load command, since you can use C load and C load M. The M meaning it is a machine code software.
I wonder if the big gap between both read and write heads resulted in this not working, although something was coming through. Then I tried putting a program on a standard cassette, which finally worked. So let's make a quick mixtape of Coco software. Since it's a special occasion, I opened a TDK SA90, although computers don't require the best quality cassettes, I believe. It came with a bunch of stickers. So in Audacity, I put together a bunch of WAV files from the archive site and put the tape in my desktop Technics RS6, which is great and connected to my Mac using an RCA2 USB device. Press record and start. Waited a couple minutes as the programs were being recorded. Good moment to start writing the label which I put on the cassette. Also I added a car, guitar, cup of coffee and a star to make it even nicer. Then I moved over to the Coco, put it in the cassette deck which as you can see really can use some Retrobrite and turned on the computer and loaded the first program. This type of basic uses exec instead of run to start the program. This was the game Cave Hunter, which looked a bit like Pac-Man, but didn't take any input from the keyboard. It probably needs a joystick, which I do not own at this moment. Let's continue on to the next program. Alpha Search, which also did not respond to any of my key presses, and displayed a bunch of letters in squares. So I loaded the next part of the tape. Autobahn. I typed in my channel name which would fit one letter short sadly. Also this part was shot with my ZV-1 which I still have to get used to and sometimes has some issues with the focus being all over the place. Apologies of course, I'm a bit of a modern and a retro amateur. Autobahn also requires a joystick I think. Very nice music came with this protector game, which displayed a demo, so a little bit more action with this piece of software. Got to say that the colors look very nice and I'm surprised you can get these results using RF, which I always found to be quite a dodgy video connection. This game scenery is very detailed over the others we have seen until now. Then a game I could finally play using the keys, a game that was very fun, Tetris. Very well playable. So with that, Tetris, I want to wrap up this video. I think it is clear what is the next thing to look for to add to this color computer, a working joystick. I found this interesting article on a German website showing how you can make an adapter. So maybe I will try to make one of those or source one of eBay. Also I'll be on the lookout for a real joystick, although they don't show up on my usual hunting grounds too often. So I will continue to play Tetris and for now I want to thank you for watching me mess with this Coco.